this is a short video of me changing the master cylinder on my 2003 Land Rover Defender TD5. The symptoms I had that led me to change the master cylinder were a type of brake fade, i.e. when I put my foot on the brake pedal it stopped the vehicle but the brake pedal still kept travelling towards the floor. With no brake fluid leaks in the system I deduced that it was something to do with the master cylinder. I start the job by removing the brake fluid that's in the reservoir. I was hoping by just removing the brake fluid from the reservoir I wouldn't have to bleed the brakes. But that was obviously wishful thinking. As you can see I tried different methods of um, getting this fluid out. Eventually I just loosened a couple of nuts and let gravity do its work. There are obviously lots of tools on the market to do this job. Unfortunately I didn't have a clean one. I've got a, an old suction pump, but I didn't, just didn't want to contaminate the brake system in any way, shape or form. I persevered with do anything but get the right tool for the job method. It doesn't really pay off in the long run. This method was quite useful, using an old spray bottle to remove the final few drops. Once most of the fluid was removed, I set about loosening all the nuts and bolts. first thing was to undo all of the brake pipe nuts and then undo the two nuts securing the brake master cylinder. Once the master cylinder was removed, all I had to do was clean up the mating surface. That's a very vocal male robin that you can hear in the background. This is a pretty straightforward swap, just old for new really. I put some automotive silicon around the flange just to make sure I've got a good seal. Here I'm just removing the small bottom plug just in case it's awkward to get out once the unit's in place. I almost forgot to remove the um, protective cover here. Once I'm satisfied the master cylinder is located properly, I fit the two nuts securing the master cylinder to the brake booster. I'm not talking these down to any specific torque, I'm just tightening them as tight as I think is necessary. When I'm fitting the brake lines back into the master cylinder, I don't push the pipe actually right home. I kind of leave it loose so that I've got free movement on the nut and I can guarantee I'm not going to cross thread the nut. These, aren't, these nuts are awkward. Here I'm just filling the reservoir on the new master cylinder with the uh, recommended brake fluid. 
I removed the two signal wires from the old reservoir cap and fit them on the new reservoir cap. Now I'm just fitting the old ID label to the new brake fluid reservoir. Once the reservoir is topped up and the lid is firmly on, I can now go around and test the brake pedal. Absolutely no pressure in the brake system. I have to bleed or vent the air out of the braking system. This is a process I'm sure everybody's familiar with, um, it's just a bit laborious. This job is much easier when the wheels are off the vehicle. First I loosen the brake bleed nipple. To simplify the bleeding of the brakes, I'm going to use a one-man brake bleeding kit. If you didn't already know, the procedure is attach the, um, the bleeding kit with the nipple released and then pump the brakes for as many times as it takes to remove any air bubbles within the system. I'm not sure this is a great system. Um, I can see there's a little bit of a drip on the hose where it connects to the nipple. That could be a bit of a problem. Once I completed this task, I took my Land Rover out for a test drive. Everything seemed to be fine. The next day whilst driving my Land Rover, I did notice that it seemed to be a little bit sluggish. When I eventually stopped and got out of the vehicle, I could smell a kind of burning smell. I bent down and touched the um, brakes and they were all very hot. It seems they were all binding. I carried out all the usual checks, the brake pedal seemed fine, I just couldn't figure out what was going on. So I restarted my Land Rover and I gave it a few really firm presses on the brake pedal. I took it for a test drive and uh, the brakes worked perfectly. I think they work better now than they've ever worked, I'm really pleased. Regarding the brake binding, all I can think is there might have been a little bit of debris in the brake system and eventually it just moved. Or it could have been something sticking within the new brake master cylinder and that freed itself up once it had a bit of use. Anyway, fingers crossed it won't happen again. The total cost of this job was £62 for the master cylinder and about £10 for the fluid. Thank <laughs> you.